My name is Gerald Schroeder. Hi, Gerald Schroeder. How's it going, dude? I'm glad you could make it, because, well, this feels kind of like some sort of meeting where people discuss their problems. In this case, you are going to give us scientific proof that will make you believe in God in five minutes. So obviously this is SOA or Stupid Opinions Anonymous. Although I'm not sure why I'm here, I don't have any dumb opinions. All I said was, if you give me long enough, I will be able to cure cancer with whiskey. I have, I have a, thank God, a strong science background from MIT, Master's Institute of Technology, Bachelor's, Master's, PhD, seven years in the physics staff. All right, calm down, Mr. Overqualified. If anything, sitting here listing off a bunch of impressive sounding things, well, it kind of makes me less inclined to think you are about to say something actually, you know, smart and accurate and all that. Because really, anything you could say should be able to stand on its own legs without you having to throw out what a big brain authority you are on a bunch of subjects. A bunch of subjects, mind you, that have little to nothing to do with the topic at hand. So yeah. Seen a whole range of atomic bombs detonated. Were they detonated in your fucking face? Because I literally cannot think of a single goddamn reason you would bring that up in regards to this conversation. Anyone could have done that, from the world's smartest brainer to some guy wandering the desert with his pants on his head. Seeing something only qualifies you to describe what you saw. And that still doesn't mean that you understood it. Moved to Israel, met my wife, Barbara Sofer, a great writer. My god, man, how much meaningless information are you going to give us about you? Because I would stop. The more you keep prattling, the more I'm going to think you don't actually have anything to back up the title of your video here. Having a wife is not exactly a rare thing after all, unless he's trying to make himself relatable. But then what about the unmarrieds? Obviously, they aren't going to believe anything you say, because that's how science works. And uh, then... Uh teach Torah and science. So luckily, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I have the two that come together. You taught a religious text and science. Crikey, I hope not at the same time, because that would make for some awfully confusing lessons. It would be a lot like, God did this. And here's the scientific explanation, which is nothing like what the book says. Tests on Tuesday. Don't fuck it up. And one of the questions is a, that I'm asked as a scientist... Oh, oh, I have one. If the universe is infinite and time is also infinite, why does my head hurt the morning after a 72-hour drinking binge? I mean, I made sure to mix my drinks and eat absolutely nothing whilst getting as little actual water into my body as possible. I just don't understand. Is how can a scientist really believe that there's something that we refer to usually as God? It's both an interesting question and, you know, not really, because the answer is actually very simple. You can be a scientist and believe literally anything. The only thing being a scientist really entails is using the scientific method to work things out in a particular field, but it's rarely more than one or two things that any particular scientist will specialize in. So any of the sciences they don't understand they are perfectly capable of believing some very stupid shit about things that they never learned. It's why when creationists bandy about a thousand scientists agree that the world is only 27 years old or whatever dumbass thing they believe, we can comfortably ignore them until they say something more along the lines of a thousand geologists, at which point we just know they're lying because obviously... You know, is this metaphysical whatever acting in the world or producing the world? And the irony is... Oh, God, irony. I don't know why, but whenever anyone brings that up on this channel, it's not actually ironic. It's just something really stupid or untrue. Or untrue and really stupid. But our guy here told us how smart he is, so he wouldn't do that, would he? The question's really a non-starter. Oh, well, thank non-existo he didn't say something dumb. He said something fair. Yeah, it's a non-starter, because of reasons stated above, and nothing else. Science has, in fact, discovered God. Fuck! I was trying to give you an out, man. But then you go and spoil it all by saying something stupid like I love you. I mean, that science has discovered God. Um, no, it hasn't. Categorically, it's just not f***ing true. God, by most definitions, is undiscoverable by science. Because God is unfalsifiable. I feel like someone with all of those qualifications, like being blown up with nukes and marriage, might have f***ing known that. And you can talk to the hardline atheists and they will say, 
it looks like science has indeed discovered God. What? 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 I, I don't even know what? That is the most insane sentence I think that has ever been uttered on this channel. The hardline atheists, the people who don't believe that God is a real thing, and the most staunch people of that ilk say that God has been found by science. I am pretty sure literally anything but that has happened. What f***ing atheists have you been speaking to? I can only assume it's some joke atheists called the atheists who think God is real alliance of geniuses. Because no, that has not happened. That has less happened than the whole science has found God thing, and that was dumb enough on its own. Christ. And how would that be? I'm assuming because you have absolutely no idea what an atheist is, have never met or spoken to one, but assume that because you think you know feckin' everything apparently, that they must believe all the same things as you, and also your theist friends think the same of themselves. So confirmation bias being the bitch that it is, boom, you're double right. Well, if you take the trouble of going to the web and, and they're typing WMAP, the initials for, for a satellite. Well, for starters, I have never been on that www.internet.com. That's where all those atheists are. I don't want to talk to any of them and know what they actually think. And second, the Wilkinson Microwave Anistropy Probe. Well, of course, I completely forgot. It sent back that message, didn't it? Error. Stuck, please remove from God's beard. It makes so much sense now. It's a diagram that shows the development of the universe from the creation over time. It's a timeline. Um, okay, but that's just a diagram of cosmic inflation. I mean, it's a very nice and sciencey diagram, but it's in no way evidence of any kind of God. It's just something that represents our current understanding of how the universe came to be. Hell, even if you had a little drawing of God saying, I made this in the corner, that would still just be you putting something there and not reflexive of what the science says or what any satellite discovered. Every word on that diagram comes from the NASA site. Ah, oh, and there I was thinking it came from some religious texts. You know, because of how smart they are and not all full of allegorical bullshit from people who had no idea that any of this kind of shit existed. Seriously, if any of those books contained anything, even remotely like this, maybe they would have something. But it is utterly unsurprising that none of them do. Mostly because of how wrong they are all the time about fucking everything. I wonder why that is. It is the condensed knowledge of the scientific community of how the universe created and how it got to where we are today. And for some reason, they completely forgot to add the picture of God bent over at the beginning, farting the universe into existence as he so obviously did. Although the idea that we are merely a cosmic god fart is one of the few higher being did it ideas that actually makes sense to me. Seeing as it's so obvious how much of a puff of smelly gas you all are. Each of the lines, the vertical lines, is another billion years. I actually didn't know that. I mean, it's obvious if you count them, but yeah. And it's also nice to see that as silly as some of the things you believe are, at least you aren't a goddamn creationist, so there is at least some hope for you yet. Okay, you start from a burst of energy at the extreme left side of the diagram, and you end up at the far end. Not gonna lie, having the satellite there makes it look like the universe was leading up to that one specific thing. And we all know that's completely ludicrous as a notion. I mean, a satellite, don't be dense. The universe was obviously leading up to the creation of whiskey. The one true perfect thing with the oval. The oval sh is to indicate expansion in all directions. Ah, of course, that makes sense, because I am an oval, and I expand in all directions all the time, because I really do like food. Soon I will eclipse the sun with my mighty belly, and the true dark ages will begin. Of course, because it's a timeline, we can't show that on, on a single piece of paper. Well, obviously, you aren't trying hard enough. That or you don't have a big enough piece of paper. And as we all know, the bigger the piece of paper, the more the sciencing. That's why I know for 100% fact that this is true. We see here, most amazingly, that on the extreme left edge 
it shows a beginning to the universe. Okay, a beginning to the universe doesn't say anything about how that universe did the do. And it also doesn't say anything about whether there is anything outside of it, or if that had any kind of beginning or whatever. That's all we know. There was a time when the universe started. Anything on the other side of that, that is not science, it's shit you're making up. Now go back less than 50 years. I don't want to. You do it and I'll meet you back here. Hopefully, by that point, you'll have met an actual atheist and then we won't have to have this conversation again. And you won't sound like a big silly anymore. Hey, maybe you can even avoid taking so many nukes to the mush. If I were teaching that at tech, I might have, you, a person could lose tenure. Assuming that this data was completely unknowns and the evidence we had at the time suggested something different, yeah, potentially, if you taught things that were not science and evidence-based in a scientific principle, you should definitely expect not to be teaching science for very long. Because even a correct guess come to without using science is not science. Again, I feel like these should be things that you would know saying that there was a creation of the universe. It sounds like it's Bible. Oh, for God's non-existence sake, I really dislike this one because it's so asinine. The fact that ancient people guessed that the thing we live in had a beginning is not anything. It's a big old nothing. Because of course they guessed that. Apart from the fact that it's like a 50-50, but seeing as over time, they would have come to understand that everything around them has some kind of cycle, a beginning, a middle and an end. It stands to reason they would imagine that even reality itself would be similar. All religions do is attempt to explain nature. So of course, all their explanations would attempt to bring it all together, no matter if the details were often completely fucking wrong. Because less than 50 years ago, the overwhelming scientific opinion was the universe is eternal. Okay, so what? They were wrong. That's the beauty of science. It changes to follow the facts as they are understood. Unlike whatever book of ghosts and goblins you follow for probably not very good reasons that always stays the same. And I don't know how any of this is going to convince anyone who doesn't already think it that God is totally real. So far, it's just been, here's some fake science. Do you believe yet? There was never a beginning. The Bible is wrong from the very first sentence. And then it wasn't. It got one flip of the coin thing right, and so all the rest of it was obviously all 100% on point all of the time. Oh wait, it's not. In fact, anything that attempts to explain pretty much anything in nature in that book is often ludicrously wrong. And its stories of massive world events are utter nonsense with no evidence to support them. Me, I'm the big surprise. And then we discovered suddenly Arno Penzies and Robert Wilson, the Bell Labs in New Jersey, the Northeast of the US, discovered the echo of the Big Bang, the energy left over, which George Gamow 60 years ago predicted that if there had been a universe created hot and small, it would have exploded and the energy would get more and more dilute. Hearing someone who claims to be a very educated science guy describe the Big Bang as an explosion shows just how ignorant of this topic he actually is. Time and time again, it has been stated by countless cosmologists that the Big Bang is is not an explosion. It is an expansion, and that is not the same thing. And to hear this guy rattle off all his apparent qualifications and then get something like this so wrong is just fucking infuriating. And, the, and Penzias and Wilson, these Arnold Penzias and Robert Wilson, discover this energy that had been predicted overnight. The Bible got it right. There was a beginning to the universe. If the Bible contained this, the diagram you are showing, then maybe. But to act as if the thing that really is a binary, the universe either began or it didn't. And again, as I explained, things around people began. So it's not exactly a huge leap to think that of the everything. So no, the Bible wasn't right about anything that actually fucking matters. Now the black in the diagram is nothing. It's not a vacuum. Vacuums are within that diagram, within that cone of expansion. Oh, okay. So what is outside of the universe is nothing, and God is outside of the universe, so he is also nothing. Hey, you said it, man, not me. Back vacuums are empty space, and space is something. The black of the paper around the diagram is nothing. It doesn't fit in our human brain, because humans think in a box. 
Except humans absolutely thought of nothing as nothing and explained it. Stop pretending you know anything about how other people think. You already proved you don't know what atheists are. Don't talk yourself into having no idea what scientists or perhaps even humans are. Because I'm pretty sure if he doesn't stop, he'll start phasing out of existence. A box made of time, space and matter slash energy. No human, as clever as they might be, as expansive as they might be, thinks out of that box. Seriously, it really is not difficult to think of nothing. All you have to do is imagine someone like Matt Powell or Kent Hovind and then imagine something inside of their head and you can't. Exactly. That is what true nothing is. How are we going to have this idea of is there a God or not? Notice that the creation force isn't the three letter word G-O-D. If you look at the words carefully, it's a quantum fluctuations. Um, what? What are you talking about? We have no idea what created the universe. And quantum fluctuations are a thing in the universe. Before there was a universe, there was nothing. Holy shit. I know you think other people don't get what nothing is, but you really don't understand what nothing is, do you, mate? That understanding was first brought down by Ed Tryon, brilliant human being, in the journal Nature almost 40, 50 years, 40 years ago. I bet he didn't f***ing pretend it was God or that it existed before it existed. Just saying. Tryon realized, and he published in the journal Nature, one of the two leading peer-reviewed journals in the world, that you can create something from absolute nothing, provided you've got the laws of nature, quantum physics and the laws of relativity, and others, the laws of nature. Okay, so no God needed then. Good to know. So look what science has discovered. We can create the universe from absolute nothing, provided we have the, the, the forces of nature. Now the laws of nature, the forces of nature aren't physical, they act on the physical. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong, but quantum physics and relativity and whatever else, I'm pretty sure they are literally physical because they are part of physics. I swear to God, I'm starting to feel like a fucking crazy person listening to this bloody guy. So if they create the universe, that means they predate the universe. No, it fucking doesn't. Aside from the fact that no one is saying those things created the universe because we simply don't know and maybe we never will. But to sit there and pontificate about them in such a manner as if you know is infuriating. So now we have a set of forces, we call them the laws of nature, that are not physical, that are able to act on the physical. They create the physical from absolute nothing and they predate the universe, which means they predate our understanding of time. They are physical, they act on the physical, because that's what they are. The laws of nature came into existence at the same time as everything else, including time, which of course means that they couldn't possibly have predated the fucking universe because time didn't exist. And they are part of it. I think this man might be a fucking moron. Put that together, it sounds very familiar. If you haven't noticed it, that's the biblical definition of God. Nope, the biblical definition of God is a whole heap more than that, most of it contradictory, gibberitic nonsense. And those things, as far as scientific understandings go, don't even apply to the things you said. So the only thing you have caused me to believe in this five minutes of utter trite is that you, at least when it comes to the origins of the universe, don't have a clue what the hell you are talking about. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoon Star Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-